There are so many people that have been suffering with health issues, mold problems, allergies. You hear it all the time. And even fibromyalgia comes up quite quickly. With me is a woman that suffered significantly for many, many, many years. They gave up on her. They did not know how to help her. Nancy Johnson had, has seen it all, went through it all, wasn't even really able any longer to raise her own children because of her condition. With me, she has a story today to share with you that miracles are God's business. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank so you at the age of 24, yeah. you came significantly sick. Did it just come out of nowhere? What happened? Yeah, I had my first child and after, you know, nine months, I figured I would be over the hormonal thing, but I just had all of her body pain and I went in and said, what is this? What's going on? And they diagnosed it as fibromyalgia and there was really no medication or anything for it at that time. So they just taught me how to meditate, just to just try to keep my just mind Just meditate. Calm. Now let's get back. What is fibromyalgia? Not everybody knows. Yeah, it's just an autoimmune disease ah, okay. that um, attacks the muscles and it's all over body pain. All right, and I, it, it, it's quite common nowadays as well. Yeah. So did this change your life drastically at that time? You know, did they try different medications? There's yeah. nothing for fibromyalgia at all? Not, not at that time, there wasn't. Um, they, they would give me some antidepressants and stuff. But I tried Wait, that antidepressants? for Antidepressants? Antidepressants, but I just tried. There was, sleeping was not really working out very well either. So yeah, I tried that for a few years, but it really didn't work for me at all. So, so you, you're a new mom, it's not yeah. working out, it's yeah. falling apart, yeah. everything. How is your husband dealing with all this? Because it seems like the burden on him would be much bigger at that time to do everything around the house probably. Well, it, it, it started, it was a downslide of, you know, different, different diagnoses after that. And then I had a second child. And that was really a, an eye opener. I, I got what they call irritable bowel syndrome, which is another one of those autoimmune things. So my digestive system started to just go downhill and I started looking at, well, you know, maybe it's my diet. And, and I would, tr you know, work with different foods and, you know, drop this out and that out just to see if I was allergic. Like gluten-free, mm -hmm. vegan. Things that they, yeah, they figured, they didn't have all that stuff then, but, but yeah, I would just drop out foods and see, you know, well, in maybe three days, if I'm better, you know, I'll add the food back in. And it got to the point where I hardly had any foods left. So what foods were you still able to eat? I could only eat two foods for three years. So severe food allergies. Two uh, foods two for foods. three years. Yeah. So it was cod and broccoli, you know, which oh. are nutritious, but I, I, after three days of the same food, you're kind of over it. Yeah. That's the only two you can eat. Yeah. And you... huge quantities of food. Like I, I just was not absorbing a thing. So just, your body would not yeah. pick up anything and the mm -hmm. doctors were doomfound. No. Did you know the Lord at the time? No, not at all. No. Not at all. No. Yeah. So I, I assume you ended up down at 110 pounds or so super light. 82 pounds at one point. Oh my goodness. 82 pounds. 82. You, you yeah. must have been skin and oh, bone. Oh my gosh, yeah, I just couldn't absorb anything. Nothing was working. And I looked like I was seven months pregnant. So, um, you know, they're, of course they're looking at parasites and they couldn't find anything, you know, doing all the x-rays and the MRIs and all the things. But, you know, so much so that we just, we ran out of money for all of the, you know, everything that they tried and pretty much, okay, you're just gonna have to live with it, we don't know. We don't know how to help you. And, and uh, you know, it was kind of a hopeless situation. How, how do you live when there's no hope with two young children? Yeah, well, my husband was such, such a loyal, faithful husband. You know, he just, he carried the ball. All of it, all of it, yeah. huge. Was there family that yeah. supported? Did, did people come alongside? Yeah. Well, I, I, that worked for a while. My mom was helping make soups for me and things, but then it got to the point where I was so allergic that, we couldn't bring the car in the garage anymore. We couldn't ever, the kids couldn't bring in their friends and I was like in a bubble. So I was isolated, which now I know is the enemy. Um, his plan is to get you isolated, but I had no idea of any of this. Like I was just listening to the doctors and okay, you've got this, you're gonna have to live with it. And you know, just- So you, you yeah. shared earlier about yeah. 
meditation yeah. and that that helped. Yeah. What, were, what are you talking about here? Because you did not know Christ. No. So what kind of meditation were you doing and did it make a difference? It did. It did. Basically, they just taught me to visualize a peaceful scene and just to use that as a real calming, just breathe, just, you know, calm your breathing down. And it would totally relax me and, and the pain would go away. But as soon as I got up and went back into my, you know, regular day, it came right back. So it was so, almost having, so fibromyalgia has to do with tension yeah. or, or you just have to be relaxed all the time. Yeah. And it's very hard to, you know, be that way all the time with, unless you're in that deep place of meditation, which, you know, now that I know the Lord is. So, so you so. had that. Yeah. You said earlier you were 84 pounds. You can't function very well. I'm, I'm looking yeah. at somebody's skin and bones. Yeah. Did you ever end up in the hospital that they try to perk you back up or that they help you with that? Uh, no, I mean, my heart would race. I, I could definitely feel that my heart was, was not doing well. We actually moved me out of Western Washington to Eastern Washington where we also had family because we, f we figured that the, the drier climate would, might help the mold situation. So we, we make that move. By this time, our kids are in sixth grade and, and high school. So they, they're in the school system now over there. And I actually got a little bit better. And we lived there for eight years. And uh, my kids both graduated high school, were in college. And um, then I couldn't take the cold. So I was freezing. And yeah, it, in, in a low weight situation like that with you know hardly any food that was nutritious. Um, Broccoli I I and cot. Yeah, I could not keep my body warm and I was freezing. So we, we ended up having to move back to Western Washington to the warmer climate, to a place that was in the rain shadow of the Olympic Mountains, just to try to see if, you know, I could, I could make it over there. So we are empty nesters. We moved back to Washington and um, my husband comes home from work one day finding me crawling down the hallway. I could no longer stand, could hardly function. I was so dizzy. He's like, honey, we're going to have to take you to the hospital. And that's the last place I wanted to go because I was allergic to all the medication. There was nothing really that they could do for me. So he takes me and they end up finding out that I had an 83 degree body core temperature, which is hypothermia, and that I was in a state of malnutrition. And so I knew what they were going to do was put me on IV therapy. And, but um, that's the last thing I remember. They put me on a hotbed. Uh, this is all told to me. I didn't know any of this. They put me on a hotbed and kept me on it, warmed me up for six days, and got me stable, uh, my body temperature stable, and on the IV therapy. And six days later, my husband gets me out of the hospital. And now my brain function is gone because oh, I... No. Yeah, I mean, it was just one thing after another. He was totally devastated. He took me home and had to care for me now. Completely oh, care for me. There's so much more to this. Wow. Yeah. Can it get any worse? And yet she is sitting with me right now. There's out there people of you, and God still heals today. So if you want us to pray for you, 855-515-5550, or go to barbtv.org. People tell me, Barb, I can't hear the voice of God. How can I hear His voice? I used to have a hard time with this too. I spent years learning the difference between my own head and God's voice. When I learned how my life changed. Transformations that used to take me weeks now only take me seconds. I want to share with you everything I learned in those few years in only three hours at no charge. Go to our website, barbtv.org, and sign up for our free course titled, Empower a Champion, Hearing the Voice of God. Many of you are struggling in life. There is hope. Our passion is for you to have breakthrough by clearly hearing the voice of God. Go to barbtv.org under the tab empower a champion and sign up today. Nancy Johnson lived for years and years and years with pain, agony, got out of the hospital, was only 84 pounds, and now her brain seemed to be gone as well. 
how do you move forward? Here you are, nothing left. They sent you home like that. Yeah. Why? There was nothing they could do. Right. So they basically say, die? Or, or I, I'm, I'm, that's pretty crude, but yeah. how does that work? Well, it, they didn't want to let me go. Um, it was a fight to get me out of the hospital. But my husband just said, no, I want her home. I, want, I don't want her there. And he worked with a naturopath that um, would, they were chopping up vitamins and, and minerals and putting in applesauce, and they were feeding that to me. And because I didn't know what was going on, they were able to get me on a few uh, new foods. So they were sneaking it by? They were sneaking it by because I didn't know. My brain was out and out of, you know, I mean, I could basically walk and things like that, but I had no... So it, what Mental did that look process. like? He just don't comprehend anything right. or, yeah. or so he uh, basically he was taking care of you like a child. Right. Yep. He would walk me to the living room or to the kitchen and sit me down to eat. And was he able still yeah. to go to work or did no. he leave you? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. What an upside down financial nightmare. Yeah. yeah. And, and that doesn't even cover your health or different things. Right. Yet you're sitting here today. Yeah. So how long were you in that state? Well, it was about it was about a month later that the light came back into my eyes, and what do you mean the light came back? Well, in? he saw the light come back into my eyes, and he saw my brain come back on, and I looked at him and I go, "Oh my gosh!" I, I like woke up. Everything came flooding back in. It's almost like a walking coma. Yeah, I don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, so there were just no answers. Yeah, now, what so. about the, the doctors? Nobody knew what, why the brain shut down. Was no. it because of being in the hospital with all your allergies or what caused it? Yeah, they had no answers. No answers. No answers. But, they, but the naturopath was giving me a supplement of fish oil that would cross the blood-brain barrier. And so that, we figured out about a month of that on that supplement that my brain started to, to come back alive. I always say brains love fat. Yeah. They really do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was like two weeks after I woke up that my husband was watching TV out in the other room and he said, honey, come out here. There's a show on called Joel Olstein and it's a night of hope. And of course, I was in a hopeless situation. I was at the end of, of myself. Like there was nothing I could do anymore. And so I said, all right, let's go watch it. We, and we'd never watched a Christian program for, for a long time. I mean, I was raised Catholic, but I never knew of the promises of God. And, and so we sit down and watch the show, and here's this pastor talking about miracles. And there were testimonies. And I'm listening to these testimonies, and my heart is just pounding. Like, wow, I, I want a miracle. Like Hope yeah, came back. Yeah, I want one. And, and so I watched this show three Sundays in a row, and my heart was be my heart, he was working on my heart all week, all week. Maybe you should say that prayer at the end. There was a prayer at the end called being born again. And so the third show, I said that prayer and I am not kidding you. Joy rushed into my heart and I saw this white light come down through the top of my head, slam through my body and this what the black light come out. And he started talking to Jesus, started talking to me right away saying, I love you. I love you. I'm here for you. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to help you th with this. I'm going to help you through this. So, so you saw you were created for more and not yes. less. And, right? that, yeah. and the joy, everything just happened that way. Yeah. And by the way, if you want to accept Jesus, it, it looks so complicated, right? And, and she said even about Jesus talking to her. Yes, that is true. All you have to do is, dear Jesus, accept, I accept you inside of me. I accept you into my life. I believe that you died on a cross for the mistakes that I have made and rose from the dead to give me eternal life. Forgive me for the mistakes I have made. It can be that simple. Is that what you did? Yeah, that's simple. Very, very simple. So after Jesus came in, he started talking to me right away about going to um, healing rooms that had prayer warriors who knew their authority. Had you heard about healing rooms before? I had heard about it in Spokane, Washington. That's actually but where they But you never started. went to it. I, I did. I went a few times, but I didn't really have any, any results. So when he mentioned it to me, whispering into my ear, I thought, okay, I'll find out where they are around here in, in my area. And my husband would 
pick me up and trundle me out to the car, lay out the seats and put me on a sleeping bag and drive me you to the You couldn't Indians. sit? No. Wow. Yeah. So that's how we had to travel. And you weren't healed instantly the moment you accepted Jesus. No. It was a process for it you. It was a process, right. So my faith was being built. As I went, I was watching how they would pray for me. And Jesus was saying, well, maybe there's going to be one coming closer in your area. So I kept getting on the website and looking, you know, when, when is one coming near me? And then one night he said, check one more time. And so I went down and I checked my computer. And sure enough, one was opening up the next morning. So my husband drove me there. I was the first one through the door. And they prayed for me. And just something, something happened. There was a real healing anointing. And within two weeks, I could drive the car myself. He drove you there. You yeah. couldn't sit. What right. was, I know the viewer is saying right now, what was that prayer like? Well, you know, they had, they helped me with forgiving myself. That was a huge issue. I had forgiven everyone on my own, you know, but, but, but they're like, no, you need to forgive yourself. You need and to forgive yourself. And that unforgiveness stores in the body. Yeah. What yeah. do you need to forgive yourself for? I was just angry because all these years my body wouldn't get well. I had tried everything, you know, to, to help it, you know, all the different things and just didn't seem to respond, just didn't seem to respond. So, so you were angry with your body? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Did angry. you ever feel like a failure during that time oh my gosh, or yes. not good enough yeah. or a yeah. burden to the family? Absolutely. We do crazy things, you know? All of those, all of those, absolutely. And then isolated you know, rejected, not from my family, but just, a f just, a, just those thoughts would come at me. The enemy was just speaking to me about, you know, you're never, you're never going to, you're not going to live very long. You'll never see your grandchildren. Wow. You're not worthy, you know, but Jesus was, was saying, no, you're my daughter. I love you. I, I want to heal you. You know, I'm a healer. I can heal this. I can do this. And he taught me the scripture. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So I lived on that scripture because everything was, I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, I, I couldn't wear clothing hardly. Like I would have to wash everything a hundred times, like rashes all over my body. Wow. Yeah. It just doesn't stop. Yeah. yeah. You forgave yourself. Yep. Did that set you free of the failing feeling, the not yeah. being good enough yeah. and all of that? Yeah, and, and the pain started to go. The pain was gone. I was sleeping 16 hours a day and I didn't need any more naps. Like all of a sudden I had energy. I was calling down to Andrew Warmack's prayer line during the week. And I, I called all the churches on my little island and I said, put me on so your prayer So much more list. to this. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? She started living instead of dying because Jesus got in her life and she no longer saw herself as a nobody, worthless person. That's what God has for you. Stay tuned. There's more. Are you ready to inspire and change lives? You can make a difference for a better tomorrow. God created you for more. You matter. There is an unprecedented pandemic of forgotten hearts. You can bring hope and answers. Inmates feel alone, afraid, and abandoned. Now is the time to find, to stand, to change, and transform lives. God loves them unconditionally. Adopt a Champion empowers inmates to be a champion within themselves, within their family, and in the world. There are three ways you can help. Become part of our team, pray and donate. Together, we can make a difference. You can start today. Go to adoptachampion.org. So you have an, an healing room in your own area now. Yeah. Jesus is in it mm -hmm. and you start seeing results. Yeah. What was that like? It was very, very exciting. Yeah, he, he would have me make a little list of my victories and, you know, okay, I got cucumbers in, I got to bring flowers in and put them on the table, you know, just all the little tiny victories and he would have them, you know, I mean, put them in my bathroom up on the mirror and just You go mean over. Jesus had you yeah. bring them in? Yeah. yeah. And, and you, he was talking to you, that's what you could bring in next. Yeah. Never thought of anybody yeah. being excited about a cucumber. Mm -hmm. But you were. Oh, yeah. 
How long had it been since the beginning of your sickness at that point? How many years? Well, 14 when I, it was 14 years when I was like in a really bad, a bad way. But yeah, I got, it was, I was 49 years old when I invited Jesus into my heart. 20 years later. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. here you yeah. are. Yeah. Things are getting better. Yeah. Why do you think Jesus didn't heal you instantly? You know, that's a question that comes up because mm. often he does it instantly, but not always. Yeah. But yet he wants to heal. Yeah. You know, it was a pro I think he took me through the process of of coming back and and being with people and having people. I had to come forward hundreds of times for prayer. And he just kept saying, you need to, you need to lose the pride, you know, come humbly forward and, and talk about things with people because I never, I hid everything under the rug, but this was forcing, this was help. He was helping me learn, look, you can be honest, you can be vulnerable, you can be transparent. And that's what I needed just to get around people again. And so it was beautiful. He was, he was creating friendships and he was, he was healing me and but he taught my husband to lay hands on me. And so it was all more like, you know, look, you, you're in love with me as God, but you also need people. You need the body of Christ around you. You so. liked the isolation in the end because that was your norm. Yeah. Then what happened after that? Yeah, well then, you know, it was just, I found out about a Bible college near me and I was so excited to go because, you know, in critical condition, I figured I needed the Word of God in me as quick as, as, as I could. So I started Bible college. I went through three years of that and two years on staff. And Wow. Now, how, how yeah. is that possible with all yeah. these financial burdens of all these medical bills over the years? Oh, my God. I'm sure you were making payments, you know? Well, what point. happened is I went to the, the opening night. I found out, you know, all about the school, but I went out, sat on the porch, and was just crying and crying and crying. And a pastor followed me out and said, Hey, what do you think? And I'm like, well, I would love to come to your Bible school, but we all our charge cards are maxed out. Like we're mm -hmm. just existing. We're just making, you know, the the, you know, paying the bills. And he goes, you know what? If it's God's will, He's going to pay the bill. And I said, but I can't sit down, you know, for that many hours. And I had all these excuses. I can't. Wait, I can't wait. He's going to pay the bill, and you can sit down. How does that line up? Yeah, I don't know. So I said, well. You know, I'll, I'll, and so I went to the interview the next day, and they prayed for my brain to function. They prayed for financial provision for me, and I, I go out of there thinking, well, I don't know what's going to happen. And I get home, and my neighbor calls me, and she, she says, you know that that's Bible school you wanted to go to? And I forgot all about I told her. She goes, I'd like to pay for two-thirds of your tuition. And I just, I, I hung up, and I went screaming around the house because, it really was God's will, then he was going to pay the bill. And so I've never seen that kind of faith. So I just stepped out in faith, even though I couldn't sit down. And I, within two weeks, I was sitting um, six hours a day for four days a week for the school. And, and you couldn't sit prior. Mm -hmm. Wow. How did your husband take that? Because, you know, yeah. a, a husband could say at that moment, get a job. We need help here. You know, but he yeah. didn't. No, he's just the most gracious most gracious man ever and just realizing that hey this is what my wife wants to do she wants to learn about Jesus she wants to to minister to others she's she's you know she's praying for others and they're getting healed so he just supported me all the way Beautiful. today you have your own ministry yes and everything has swapped yeah. around what is your message that you usually share with people? What, what, who do you minister to? Is it those with uh, terminal illnesses or sicknesses or long-term is a better word? How did you find your healing? Did you write a book about it? What yeah. changed? Yeah, I actually did. I wrote a book. I actually, they, I was telling everybody about Jesus in the grocery stores, whatever. And so they, they um, decided to ordain me as an outreach pastor. And I'm out there on the streets you know, telling, you know, people, hey, he really does want to heal you. He's right here with us. You know, God wants us well. And I figured if I just wrote a book about it, I could hand the book out. So I wrote a book, uh, you know, and I'd been in healing rooms for years. So I knew that, you know, there were certain keys that people didn't know, like they needed to forgive and they needed to know the truth and they needed to re renew their mind and they needed, you know, to understand about how faith works. And so, yes, I wrote a book. It's called As For Your Miracle. Yeah, and so I, I love to um, minister healing to people 
because God wants them well. He, you know, and and so. when you have a story like yeah. your story, yeah. and you're on the other end, mm -hmm. did you notice that people received more the truth about Jesus Christ? Yeah. That had made a difference? Absolutely. So you've ministered yeah. to so many people today. What is mm -hmm. one of your favorite stories about that? Oh my gosh. I got a, a letter from a woman. She, she saw my testimony in the 700 Club. She found my book, she read my book, she emailed me and said, hey, I have a very similar situation to what you had. Could you please pray for me? And so we got on the phone together, we prayed together. Two years later, I get a letter from her that says, you know, she was also wanting to get, to get pregnant, autoimmune diseases, you know, it's all those things, makes it hard in every way. She wrote me a letter and said, I got completely healed when you prayed for me, and I want to introduce you to my baby. I was able to have a baby, and so it's just, it's just thrilling to see what the Lord will do when you just step out and you pray for others. Makes such a difference. You have such an incredible testimony. So yeah. why don't you speak to our viewer right now yeah. and just say a prayer for them? Yes. Oh, oh my goodness. You know what? Jesus wants to do it again for you. He is, he is Lord and he is your savior and he's your healer. So right now I just speak healing over your bodies from head to toe, whatever you have. He wants to heal you on every level, your heart, your mind, your body, your spirit, all of it. We speak healing and life to you and that you would, would you, you would wake up and just become alive right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Nancy, Amen. what a story. Amen. What an incredible story He's amazing. of God fully redeeming your body, your soul, and your spirit. Full makeover. If people would like to get a hold of you, what is your website? My website is called engagingjesus.com. And yeah, I have all my things on there. I have videos of, of testimonies of healings and my books and devotions. Everything so, is there. Yeah. It was a privilege having you on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank Are you currently you so still much. helping in healing rooms? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm, I'm not healing surprised. Team. Wow. Those healing rooms, what happens in those healing rooms? We pray because God told us, pray. So we pray for people. And the miracles that you see, the healings that happen, even in prisons, when we minister to prisons, we just this week prayed for someone with a big knee problem. We prayed and the knee was completely new and pain all gone. That's my God. He has created you for more, not for less. And we'd love to pray for you, teach you about that, connect with you, and share how much Jesus is in the business of healing today. 855-515-5550 or go to bartv.org. And I just want you to know this. God loves you more than your circumstances. And so do I.